Hi, I'm Iris Fritz with the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. And I'd like to talk to you today about taking a series circuit and combining it with a parallel circuit to uh, have the result of what we call a combination circuit. Okay, so let's look back and figure out our voltage drop over R234. I have two amps, 10 ohms that we figured back from here. Again, using that the knowledge that you have about a parallel circuit are 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 and take the 1 over again will give us the resistance over this network and you'll find out that that's 10 ohms and I times R gives us a 20 volt drop here and I want you to notice what I'm circling goes with each of these resistive networks. So if we know that we have 20 volts over R6, 20 volts over R5, and 20 volts over R234, a 20 volt drop, that leaves us with how many volts going over R1? Well, isn't it true if we have a total of 100 volts and we know the voltage drops over everything but one of the resistors, we can take the 100 volts and subtract from it the voltage drops that total up here. So I have 20 plus 20 is 40 plus 20 more is 60. For a voltage drop over R1 of 40 volts. So R1 has 2 amps, a voltage drop of 40 volts and now we can also figure out resistance. So let's go ahead and put this information before we lose sight of where we're at into our table to help us keep track. Right now we determine that there is a 40 volt drop over R1. Again, check your work. 40 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 better equal 100 volts and it does. So coming back here, I know a little more about R1. I know that we have a voltage drop over R1 of 40 volts. And let's go ahead and figure out what our resistance is. So we know that 40 divided by 2 amps, the 40 volts divided by 2 amps is going to give us 20 ohms. Now let's start to look at this network a little closer using what we know from our redraw and feeding it back here let's start to analyze what's going on over these two. Now one thing nice about our third redraw is we figured out the voltage drop over this whole network. And what do you know about a parallel circuit? Voltage is constant. So if I have 20 volts going over this that means I have 20 volts, a 20 volt potential over R2 as well as over R3, 4. So coming back here 20 volts dropped over here, 20 ohm resistor, current now can be determined. I'm going to come over to R2, put in 20 volt drop here, and let's determine how much current is going through R2 using Ohm's law, E divided by R. So you can see that there's one amp. And now all we have left is this, R3, R4. And we actually know enough to come back to our first redraw and you can see how these redraws help you feed information from one to the other to help us do analysis. Looking at R34, what do we know right now? Well, we know that there's a 20 volt potential coming in here. We also know that there was, if you will, 20 volts here. And what else do we figure out with R2? We figured out that one amp of current was coming through here. Now we had two amps coming in. One amp came down this way and using your good thinking that must mean that I have one amp available for this side of the circuit. So again you had two amps coming through our one and then remember that current path split. One amp coming this way and one amp coming this way. And now we can finish off our three and our four because they're in series. I have one amp going through each resistor. So I'll come back here and through our reasoning we found that there's one amp through R3 and one amp through R4. We're nearly done. Ohm's law will allow us then to determine our voltage drop over each. 
So here I have I times R, 10 volts dropped over R3, and 10 volts dropped over R4. And now you can answer just about any question that might be posed as far as your worksheets go because you've tracked it on a table. One thing I'd like to encourage you to do is to check your work. Your numbers are not going to work out as smooth as some of these numbers. I did a, this in my head. And I used, if you will, uh, information that would allow us to avoid the calculator. But you are going to be definitely pushing buttons on your calculator and doing some calculations. You get current that might be 36 uh, milliamps. You get all kinds of different current reads. You get all kinds of voltage drops. And they're not nice easy round numbers, nice easy whole numbers. So use what you know about Ohm's Law to help you also check your work if you feel like if you're in doubt. So I think where you would feel the most doubt is maybe some of this. And what I'd like to do is use our good reasoning and what we know about Ohm's Law to check our work and reason through and make sure our table is filled out correctly before we start answering questions. So I'm coming back here and I'm going, now does this make sense? Well, 1 amp plus 1 amp is 2 amps, and 2 amps was given to us in the problem. So that makes sense. And we can see 2, and one thing I didn't do because it gets so messy, but current flows this way, splits here, flows this way, comes back together again, and goes through the rest of the circuit. And this is true all the way down. As I'm putting resistive networks together, keep thinking about how your current is splitting around these resistors coming back together and going back again. A couple of ways to check your work would be to come back to your redraws and make sure that you've added up your numbers correctly and it's making sense to you. You can see 2 amps is the steady current flow. That looks good. I'm just checking my work. You could come back and you could do a very complex version of adding up resistance if you want. I like to try and avoid that if possible but you could add up all of your resistances and see if that is making sense. So what I would advise you to do though, because we're in a combination circuit, is to try and feed off of some of the other basic Ohm's law. Voltage in a parallel network stays constant. Your voltage potential is constant because of the straight wire here. So you want to make sure that it makes sense that you have 20 volts here and 20 volts here. And how you could quickly check is see if R3 and R4 add up to 20 volts. R3, 10 volts, plus R4, 10 volts. Yep, I have 20 volts there. So run little checks as you go to secure your answer and then answer any question that's posed. Another thing, too, that you'll be getting is uh, you'll be introduced to power and measuring power in watts. On a table, power would come in over here. I'm just going to draw it up so that you know. When you're introduced to power, and that would be measured in watts, you would figure all of that, all of these uh, power, if you will, loads right here. And so we could do that quickly if you would like. You know that power is equal to I times E. And so you could simply just go and nearly do, at least with this one, in your head. 2 times 40, 80 watts. I won't do the whole thing because you can see how easy it is from here. So 1 times 20 is 20 watts, and so on and so forth. And you can figure out all your wattage for the circuit.